After an unarmed black man named George Floyd was murdered by four police officers in Minneapolis, Minnesota, protests broke out across the United States. And surprisingly, police officers remained relatively calm as people demanded justice for George Floyd. As you can see from this video here, armed protesters actually stormed the state capitol in Michigan demanding justice for George Floyd. And in California, protesters were actually confronting cops directly, getting in their faces, screaming in their faces, and demanding justice for George Floyd. Or wait, hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm getting word from my producer that I mixed up the footage. I made a mistake. That was not footage from the protests regarding George Floyd. That was protests that took place a couple of weeks ago. Right-wing protests of armed thugs demanding that states reopen. So the footage that I'm going to show you, this is actually footage from Minneapolis, where police officers responded in a more predictable manner. So these are photos from Star Tribune's Carlos Gonzalez. And okay, this is what I expected. We see police officers in riot gear, shooting rubber bullets, uh, throwing tear gas. This uh, makes a lot more sense. So the police didn't apparently feel intimidated or threatened or the need for riot gear when armed thugs stormed the Capitol building in Michigan, or when people were yelling in their faces in California, but in Minneapolis, as people demand justice for the murder of George Floyd, now they feel threatened. Now, if you've been watching the news, you know, there's uh, various, I, I think probably dozens of live streams of what's taking place in Minneapolis currently on YouTube, but you can't really characterize this all with a broad brush, right? Some of the protests are leading to riots and looting, whereas a lot of people are just marching and demanding justice, specifically demanding for the murderer of George Floyd, murderers specifically, to be charged and arrested. But, you know, because there were many instances of rioting and looting, conservatives took issue with this. They didn't say very much about how maybe the right-wing protesters went a little bit far storming the state capitol with guns. But in this instance, they're very concerned about the behavior of the people who are rebelling in Minneapolis. For example, Tommy Loren clutched her pearls at the looting, tweeting, If you smash and bang on cop cars, riot and burn flags in the streets and loot your community businesses, you are not a protester. You are part of the problem. Is this really how you bring justice? Is this how you honor his life? Now, I should note that at the time she made that tweet, she made precisely zero tweets about George Floyd. Zero tweets demanding justice for George Floyd. So let's not pretend as if Tommy Loren cares about honoring his life. She doesn't care. But the point is that she wants these people to voice their grievances in a more respectable manner, in a more peaceful manner, if you will, right? Well, no, actually, because if you actually do try to draw attention to police brutality in the way that Colin Kaepernick did, and you kneel during the Pledge of Allegiance, National Anthem, She's going to take issue with that as well. Here's what she said about a city official who chose to kneel during the Pledge of Allegiance. I think what she's doing is disrespectful. I think also we have to remember that just because she has the right doesn't make her right. So she's outraged when you protest peacefully, but she's also outraged when you riot. It's almost as if she doesn't want you to speak up when you're mad about the fact that police officers across the country are murdering unarmed black Americans with impunity. She just wants you to be quiet. But she's not alone because Charlie Kirk also clutched his pearls and he tweeted, if you burn a city to the ground to riot against injustice, you should be arrested and thrown in prison. Now, I checked his timeline and I didn't see any tweets uh, talking about what he thinks the penalty should be for murder. But if you riot, you should definitely be arrested. If you uh, murder an unarmed black civilian, eh, he doesn't really care about that. It's the rioting that's the biggest issue in his opinion. Now, America's biggest bootlicker, Andy No, snitched on Ilhan Omar's daughter for committing the unspeakable crime of retweeting the Twin Cities DSA, who asked for supplies needed to shield and treat people who have been harmed by police abuse. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, my conservatives are hypocrites. I get it. But shouldn't we, as responsible leftists, actually condemn this behavior that we're seeing, condemn the looting? Well, my response to that is sure. And I'm going to take the time to condemn looting right now. Quote, 
American billionaires got 434 billion richer during the pandemic. As Michael Brooks put it, this is looting and I condemn this. Uh, this is a photo of Kelly Loeffler. She is a United States senator who, along with some of her colleagues, including Richard Burr, Dianne Feinstein, dumped their stocks before the market tanked after they were briefed on COVID-19. As Blaine puts it, she is a looter, and I absolutely unequivocally condemn her and the behavior of her colleagues. This photograph includes images of some of the world's biggest, most notorious looters. It includes billionaires like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, one of the Koch brothers, and these individuals are all looters who looted the wealth that they now control. They stole the wealth and now they were able to use the wealth that they've accumulated to buy political capital to influence politicians to make them even richer. I absolutely condemn these looters. And there's a lot more instances of looting that I want to condemn here. Quote, wealthiest hospitals got billions in bailout for struggling health providers. Bonanza for rich real estate investors tucked into stimulus package. Airlines got the sweetest coronavirus bailout around. Large troubled companies got bailout money and small business loan program. Stealth bailout shovels millions of dollars to oil companies. And as David Sirota points out, these are all instances of looting and I wholeheartedly condemn all of them. So yes, all of those instances that I just listed are bad. Oh, okay. So you wanted me to actually talk about the rioting and the looting. Um, here's the thing. I don't actually consider what protesters in Minneapolis are doing as rioting or looting. As Mark Lamont Hill puts it, these are rebellions. This isn't random or irrational violence. This is organized resistance to an evil system that only pays attention when it feels financially or physically unsafe. This is how we feel every day. Exactly. This is a response. This uprising, this rebellion is a response to sustained oppression and tyranny. State-sanctioned murders cannot happen. They can't keep happening. So this is a community who is exhausted and fed up, rising up and saying, enough is, en is enough. So I don't view this as some irrational act of civil disobedience. This is a rebellion. These people are demanding change. And if that change is not going to come, then they're going to make everyone in society feel uncomfortable until everyone feels compelled to listen to them and take action ultimately. And all of this could end like that if the murderers who killed George Floyd, we all saw the video, were arrested. But do you want to know what happened instead? Rather than marching to his house and arresting their colleague, dozens, if not hundreds of police officers stood in front of his house to protect him. None of them chose to go into his house and put handcuffs on him. Instead, they chose to protect him. So if you are choosing to just dismiss this as a riot of people, you know, not being respectable, not doing what's right for the movement. Respectability politics has not gotten us anywhere. It hasn't gotten us anywhere. And these protesters feel like they are left with no other choices. They have to make noise. They have to rebel like this openly because you weren't paying attention to them when they were peacefully protesting. In fact, a lot of the conservatives we talked about denounced them. Trump called Colin Kaepernick a son of a bitch and said that he should be fired for taking a knee during the national anthem. So you weren't listening to them when they were trying to be peaceful. So now you don't get to complain that they are using the last method that they have, rebellion, to stop these types of murders from taking place. And I will leave you with the wise words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, this is a video shared by Isaiah James, who was a 2020 congressional candidate from New York. This is what we need to know about what's taking place in Minneapolis. I think we've got to see that a riot is the language of the unheard.